what they have actually Sure, is. sure, sure. It's, so this is difficult. Uh, it's been a, it's a big idea, and I think that it's been growing and developing over the last uh, 100, 200 years or so. Uh, so if anyone's familiar with Marcus Garvey, he, it was probably his brainchild, and really the notion is that the coming together of African people on the continent, as well as African people in the diaspora, and kind of creating that connection. So there can be a leveraging of ideas, leveraging of thought, and a new way of thinking about your identity so that it's not so localized and so, um, what's the word? So, so small in a lot of senses, but to actually be able to see the larger. Isolated. Yeah, so iso isolated in our approach and isolated in our perspective of, you know, uh, what blackness is. And I, so I think that really what pan African and what it strives to do is to actually take that and expand it, you know, say that you actually do have things in common with these people who live on another side of the world. And then even for continental Africans who are on the continent, saying that there's other people on this same continent who are very similar to you. And I think that's another um, issue as well. And so I think the main thing that we're trying to accomplish through True Culture University is to kind of start showcasing those different perspectives, start showcasing those different ways of viewing one another, start showcasing those different ways that you do about yourself. Because like you said, you know, the perspective of isolation in your own uh, way, how you identify yourself, I think you can kind of begin to expand that. And I think that our timing for it right now is really, you know, it hasn't been better, you know, considering exactly. everything that's going on uh, globally. And I think that really with the advent of the internet, it actually allows for those bridges of connection to finally be created and to be leveraged, you know, kind of create a new type of um, movement. So. Wonderful. Um, I, I heard you say what blackness is, mm -hmm. and that's a big, big question, um, especially here in the United States of America, um, uh, on our theme of uh, social and racial justice um, and 13th. Um, and for those who don't know, it, uh, Ava DuVernay and Van Jones called it 13th because it's based on the 13th Amendment. Um, and the 13th Amendment in the Constitution says that it is, um, that was uh, what was passed, the amendment to uh, free slaves and to keep slavery from occurring um, on the uh, land of the United States. However, there is a clause in there, and the clause specifically says that except for prison. So if you are a prisoner, slavery in the form of we know slavery is actually allowed. Um, I want everyone to take time out to actually read the 13th Amendment and see what it actually says. It, there is a clause in there except for uh, prison. If you do um, uh, get a chance, I hope everyone does come out to uh, the uh, Center um, movie um, next Friday. Um, there's going to be a, a really good explanation as to how uh, slavery um, has been um, reinvented um, and reincarnated in our uh, justice system and our criminal justice system um, as we know it today. Um, and they use that, uh, that a clause in the 13th Amendment to justify it, um, both at the local level and at the Supreme Court level as well. Um, but going back to what is blackness, specifically in 13th, um, Avery DuVray points out this idea of what happens to the black body. What does the black body mean in the United States? And can you just talk a little bit, and maybe it's um, over philosophizing a little bit about it, never, never if that's that. a term, <laughs> <Never that. laughs> but um, about what blackness is and what does it mean to, have, to be in a black body here in the United States of America? Well, I think you hit it uh, right on the head. I think blackness means something for every location that you're in. You know, my blackness being an African-American male in the United States of America is completely different from someone else's blackness who's in Kenya or someone else's blackness who's in Jamaica and someone else's blackness who's in a completely different part of the world. And I even just being African-American is interregional as well. My blackness and my uh, experiences are going to be very different in the South than they're going to be uh, up North or very different in California than they'll, mm -hmm. yeah, than they'll mm -hmm. be in Philadelphia. So I think that, you know, it's a lot of intersections that are occurring. Uh, I think that the journey of understanding your blackness is something that is definitely very much individualistic mm -hmm. and it's very much based upon your own um, experiences. But I do think that overall and overarchingly that there are core components of that experience and there are core structural challenges to being black that exist at both the local, regional, and global level. And it's basically based on your it's opposition to that same structure, that same power system that is, you know, repressing you. So I think that that commonality mm -hmm. is one of the first things that I think really started to stand out to me and that I started to really look at. But then you also have the cultural aspects that kind of unfold as you look at those different places in those different areas. I don't know if I answered your question. You did. Okay. It's, it's a very philosophical question. Yeah. Um, Anae, are you still online? Okay, great. So 
perspective from an African American male, uh, perspective from an African American female. Um, what does it mean? What does blackness 